Hey, it's Tom from Pack Hacker. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Mission Workshop Fitzroy Backpack. And at Pack Hacker, we do travel gear reviews like this all the time. So if you wanna optimize your travel experience, consider subscribing. So here is what Mission Workshop has to say about their Fitzroy. Got the laptop here for definition. The Fitzroy is an impenetrable fortress of a pack that holds and protects all of your gear. Built to last a lifetime with waterproof fabrics and military spec construction, the Fitzroy features multiple weatherproof compartments, urethane coated zippers, waterproof materials, and an internal frame sheet. So does it live up to all those claims? Let's check it out. And before we jump in, just wanted to note that their logo is an anagram, which is pretty awesome. So it's the same thing right side up as it is upside down. First of all, I'm a big fan of the aesthetic of this pack from the roll top to the buckles here. It's got a good overall vibe going on and a lot of Mission Workshop stuff looks really great. This pack is shaped nicely, kind of like a giant rectangle, but due to the flap and the top loading mechanism, it doesn't look like there's a giant rectangle or suitcase on your back that you get with some other packs of a similar size. This pack has a minimalist look and you can tell that there's some tech involved when you take a look at the archive system here and some of the stretchier elastic that's going on with these buckles on the straps. Everything here is made of high quality and it's all to military spec. 1000D Cordura, the special VX version that Mission Workshop has created exclusively for this pack which means it's durable. With all this material, the pack comes in at 3.3 pounds when it's empty, which is actually pretty light when compared to some other durable packs on the market. We've also got an external dimension of 15 inches by 20 inches by eight inches, and that's going to account for 40 liters total volume inside of the pack. The first thing that catches your eye when taking a look at this pack is the metal buckles on the outside. And what these are is that they are part of the Mission Workshop archive system. And this is kind of the light version, right? So these are just buckles. But if you do look at some of the other packs that Mission Workshop has to offer, you're gonna see that archive system used more often. So it's basically their proprietary version of Molly. It can be used to extend a type of pack any way that you see fit for your needs. So you can add additional pouches, additional cases to the archive system itself and really customize the pack to your needs. It's important to note that in other Fitzroy versions, you're just gonna have these standard buckles, but these uh, archive buckles here come with the Fitzroy VX version. So these buckles were a little bit interesting for us to use at first, but the more we use them, the more we started to like them and we saw the benefit of them for this pack specifically. Moving on to the rest of the components here, there is a strap on the top of the bag and we feel that it's a little bit thin. It's not super padded. We kind of wish there was more padding there. Now in contrast to that, we move on to the straps of the backpacks themselves and we think these straps are some of the best on the market for this size of pack. So. Although they look a little bit thin, the foam in here is of high density and the mesh is of high quality. So when you have this thing on, it's going to be very comfortable to use. And there is an adjuster strap at the bottom here. We also have load lifters at the top and these do wonders for making your pack feel more light. With these load lifter straps, we do have this Velcro attachment here that's gonna kind of hold the strap into place. We personally wish these were a little further down on the strap itself but they do their job. The sternum strap in this bag is nothing that special. It's a standard buckle. It doesn't use the archive system or anything like that. And we have found that the strap can loosen up if you have heavier items in here and doesn't grip super well compared to the rest of the straps of the pack. So we can contrast the looser sternum strap with the amazing hip belt system that the Fitzroy comes with. Now, this is an optional upgrade. I will link it down in the description below so you can see what we're talking about. But this thing is thick, it's super padded, and almost looks like a weightlifter belt or something like that. And it's attached by a singular row of Velcro. And it really does wonders for pulling that weight kind of off of your back and securing the strap to your back. So we're sort of hit or miss on hip belts here at Pack Hacker, especially for a bag 
at about 40 liters because for urban travel, if you're traveling light enough, you don't really need one, but it's nice that the Fitzroy has that option, has that extendability if you choose to utilize it. Now, one thing that we have noticed with the hip belt when it is attached is it kind of flails all over the place. And maybe this is because we haven't broken it in. Like I said earlier, we've been testing it for about a month, but we have noticed that thing kind of just flopping around and it sort of gets in your way and you can feel it at, on your arms when you're trying to put your arms you know, down by your side. But what you can do there is you can easily just detach the hip belt and you know stuff it away in your pack when you're not using it. It's easy enough to do that. To top it all off, we do have a nicely padded mesh back and below we have a loop where you can hang any additional items off of that you need. For the main compartment, we're basically looking at a giant bucket with this nice kind of diamond patterned material here. There's not a lot of room in here for additional organization, so we'd highly recommend grabbing some packing cubes, maybe some Eagle Creek Spectre cubes because those are super lightweight and they help organize the gear inside of your pack. What this pocket does have, however, is a, an additional zippered pocket for your laptop. However, that's not gonna be padded whatsoever. So we'd recommend, you know, getting a padded laptop sleeve if you're gonna go that route. The pack does lay pretty flat, so it can kind of compress down, but it doesn't stand up alone on its own. If you do have some heavier items at the bottom here though, it can stand up straight without having to lean it up against something else. As a quick side note here, the benefit of a top loader pack is that there is no main clamshell zipper that has an opportunity to fail as you're using the pack for a longer period of time. So if you are looking for a main clamshell backpack, just make sure that that zipper is high quality. So YKK makes some really high quality zippers and you'll go well there. Because if you think about it, when you're traveling, if you do have that clamshell backpack, and having that zipper break can be a pretty catastrophic thing. So that's the benefit of a top loader. Oh, and there's a little tag of a flag in here that shows that it's been made in the USA. High quality stuff. So when you are closing that top flap, you wanna make sure to fold these sides in here. You know, not outwards, cause that would just leave a hole in this thing. Just wanna make sure you kind of fold it in. So below the flap, we do have an additional three pockets. The first one is a Free floating pocket here that does not enclose at all. This goes all the way down to the bottom of the pack. And if there's something that you really need to have some weather resistance on, you may not want to put it in this pack. It is still covered by the flap and sort of enclosed, but it is the most kind of open pocket on the pack. Maybe if you want to like throw some flip flops in there, that'd kind of be a good idea. This second pack here is a water resistant YKK zipper and it's about the height of a credit card. So you can put stuff in there, maybe some quick grabs, stuff that you maybe want to take out of your pockets and throw in there like a wallet, uh, other stuff like that. The third pocket that we do have under the flap is also a water resistant YKK zipper, same as the above. And this one actually goes all the way down to the bottom. So there's going to be plenty of room in there, a nice seal here for some weather resistance. And again, it's also underneath the flap. So you're going to have that additional layer of protection. The last pocket down here is gonna be Velcroed and we can open that up. It does stick out a little bit more on the pack, so you will have a little bit more room than what's kind of inside of this main bucket of the pack, but not a ton. And keep in mind by now, right here, we're down to kind of three levels of pocket. So you kind of wanna have flatter items in this second YKK zipped pocket, this top one that is not enclosed, and this bottom one, because if you have like you know, basketball in this one or something. It, it definitely can't fit a basketball, but if you have something that's chunkier, you're not gonna be able to utilize those other two pockets quite as much. So just be sure you're taking that into account with your packing strategy and just considering that as you're using this pack. One of my favorite things about this pack is it works well for like quick grabs. If you're at the airport going through say security, instead of using a bin, you can just stuff everything that you have in your pockets into this pack, slide it through security. There is no risk of it getting stolen and it just kind of keeps your stuff together a little bit more, allows you to pick up your bag and just exit the line a little bit quicker. At the time of this review, we have been testing the Fitzroy for about a month and we wanted to give it a decent amount of time to see what we liked about it, see what we didn't like about it. Of course, this isn't long enough to test the longevity and durability of the pack, 
be sure to head over to packhacker.com. We'll try to keep that durability timeline updated as we use this pack for a longer period of time. But we're pretty confident in the durability that Mission Workshop does have to offer. So a personal friend of Packhacker has the Rambler. They have been using that pack for years on end through rain, through snow, biking through inclement weather. Um, and it's really held up well for them and they don't really have any complaints. So again, we're confident in the brand and the durability here. So for the pros of this pack, it's a really durable pack and a lot of the weatherproofing they have going on here works super well. It has a slick minimalistic look that you don't see in a lot of other travel backpacks out there. This pack also has a great strap and harness. We found it to be super comfortable if you have a ton of weight going on in the pack. For some of the cons of this pack, it is lacking a bunch of internal organization. So again, we'd highly recommend using packing cubes if you're gonna be going with this for one bag travel. You know, you don't wanna be getting into a situation where you have individual t-shirts in here and you're digging through everything inside of your pack to try to get to it every time you wanna grab something. It's not a good situation to get into. The optional detachable hip belt can kind of get in the way of your arms when it is on, but that's easy enough to mitigate by simply removing the strap. And lastly, the laptop compartment doesn't really offer any additional padding or protection, so you're gonna wanna probably get a separate laptop sleeve if you do go with this pack. Thanks for taking a look at our review of the Mission Workshop Fitzroy. If you have made it this far in this video, I'm guessing that you're into gear, so be sure to head over to packhacker.com newsletter and we'll keep you updated with the latest travel tips and tricks and gear reviews. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you in the next video. When you're reviewing bags, how do you get them to look so amazing and puffy? Packing peanuts. Yeah. <laughs>